Hi, my name is Herb Winters from Efficient Computer Systems. I'd like to introduce our new pennant and take a few minutes to go over the features. I'll start out with the, the case. It's an ABS case with an overmold rubber grip. It fits in the hand pretty decent and is water resistant. It's got seals between the glass and the drug shuttle as well as between the drug shuttle and the MPG. Glass is hardened, similar to a modern smartphone, and the touchscreen is multi-touch. The pennant charges wirelessly. Uh, right here you can see I, I'm using a cell phone Qi charger. Any Qi charger will work. This one here seems to suit my purposes pretty well. Okay, I have the pennant here with my machine in the background so that I can show you how the drug shuttle works. These six buttons here are for access controls and they work with the drug shuttle and the MPG up here. If you don't have six axes, the remaining buttons can be reprogrammed for um, almost any other function that the pennant supports. Uh, the pennant is asleep right now, so I'll start with that. It goes to sleep after three minutes of not being used and um, only when it's running on battery. So uh, if you have it off the charger dock where it normally would sit, then it will go to sleep occasionally. It's not really much of a problem as the jog shuttle and MPG will still work even while it's asleep. These buttons down here will still work and if you touch anywhere else, it will wake it up. So um, just to demonstrate that, I'm gonna pick the C button here. Uh, for the C-axis, which is right here on my machine. If I move the jog wheel in the counterclockwise direction, you can see the C-axis creeping in the negative direction. If I move the jog wheel more negative, you can get faster movement. If you let go, it snaps to stop. And the same is true for moving in the positive direction, giving you the ability to control position really well. There's seven speeds in the positive direction using the jog wheel, and there's seven speeds in the negative direction. The cool thing is the feed rates for each of these speeds can be set differently for each axis giving you the ability to optimize the feed rates to match the access needs. Okay, I've zoomed in on the touchscreen portion. The idea of talking through how to navigate the screens in the pennant software. These buttons down here are hard buttons, meaning that their titles don't change. And up here we have nine pages, uh, we're on page one, of buttons, 10 buttons on each page. And I call them the soft buttons because they're configurable. You can configure these 10 buttons to be any one of a list of buttons that are available. We'll go through that list later. So here, here's the left navigation block, and over here's the right navigation block. These two blocks work together to help you navigate the screens uh, on the pennant. Basically, the left block is telling you what screen you're on out of the nine screens. So there's nine screens here. We're on page one. The right block tells us how to get to the other eight screens that we're not currently on. So if you look at the asterisk there and you put your finger down anywhere, um, I'm going to put it in the center just to make it simple. Now, if I drag toward any one of those numbers, it, it, figuring that my finger is that star, I will get that screen. So if I want to go to five, I drag this way and I'm on five. Now that screen changes to show the, the screens that I'm not on because I'm on five. So now there's eight other uh, pages. So if I put my finger down again and I drag back this way, I'm going toward the one and I'm back to one. It allows you to get to any any of the nine screens um, within one move, uh, making it very quick to jump to a page, hit a button, 
and jump back to the page you were on. And I felt this was really helping to make more buttons accessible without a lot of work to the user. So on that note, I'm going to quit with the navigation and I'm going to talk a little more about configuring buttons. And I'll start with the hard buttons down here. These buttons are basically set up for the uh, MPG and the jog shuttle so that you can pick an axis you want to move and then you can use the jog shuttle and the MPG to dial in some position that you want them to be at. However, not everybody has six axes and if you have a lathe you probably only have two. It seemed a waste not to use those buttons. So in the configuration we have the ability to configure those buttons for other functions besides just axis control and also configure them for the axis control. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to hit the configuration button and I'm on it's a letter page A is in that block. And if you notice, it's A through I are the options. That's a key indicator. I'm in configuration. I'm not in button pages anymore. I'm in configuration because it's, it's, a, it's a letter page. I know that all the hardware button configurations are on page H. So I need to get to page H. So I'll put my finger down. I'll look at the right navigation block and H is up and to the right. And here I am at the hard button configurations. In my particular case, X, Y, and Z, A, and C are used by my machine. It's a five axis machine. B has no function. So I'm going to hit the B and we'll take a look uh, at the options. So these, this screen is the same for all six of these buttons, these hard buttons. Um, you can turn the button off. You can't, you won't be able to highlight it or select it or do anything with it if you do that, other than go to the configuration and change it. The next one down is a normal axis. That's what all the buttons are set to that I'm using. And then if you had an axis that when you, I usually set up the jog shuttle so that when you turn the jog shuttle clockwise, it starts to move in the positive direction. And the more that you turn it, in the clockwise direction, the faster it goes in the positive direction. Likewise, going counterclockwise moves it in the negative direction. Well, if you happen to have a axis that works backwards and doesn't work correctly, you can use the reverse axis and that'll flip it for you so that the jog sh shuttle works the way you're going to expect it to always go in the positive direction of the axis. This one has already been set up. Switched layer red green is what I wanted to set it. For. And that basically is going to allow us to switch between the red and green button sets by hitting the B button. I think that's a very useful feature. These other ones are also kind of nice though too. And especially if you only had like a lathe or the three axis machine, then you would be able to also set these other options, which are, you know, the next one down is go to red page and it'll actually ask you for which page you want. So you can go to red page five, for instance, and anytime you hit the B button, it would go to red page five. Even if you were on green buttons, it would switch to the red page and go to five at the same time. So in one button press, you've actually done two things. Same thing with the green, except it goes to the green page. And then the last item, soft button function. I haven't shown you the soft buttons yet, but basically all the buttons that you saw that were programmed to do something are done through a list. There's a whole list of items and that list of soft functions, you can take any one of those functions and assign it to the B button or to any one of these buttons as well, which is kind of handy if there's something that you're going to be doing a lot. We'll go over that list and how it's created uh, a little later. So I'm going to save this. When you're in the hardware configuration screen, the way you get out is by hitting the done up here. Now you're back to the screen that you came to the configurations on. It always brings you back to the screen that you, you left on. And um, if I hit this B button, I get the green pages. Now, there's nothing programmed on those green pages yet, so it's a blank page. But if I hit this, I go back, and you can see it's still showing that I'm on page one, because as far as it's concerned, there's a page one green and there's a page one red. 
and I'm currently on the page one green. Okay, let's configure a button. To configure a button, you start out by holding down the button you want to configure. So I'm going to hit this button, and then I tap anywhere on the screen while I'm holding that button down, like that, and then let go. On the left side here, you have a scrolling list of possible button types that you can pick. And so you select from there what you want for a button. I'll select the keyboard. When I selected the keyboard, on the right side, it shows you the properties that are related to that. And in this case, it wants to know if we want a left-handed or a right-handed trackpad. I'll go with the left-handed since I'm left-handed and hit save. I'll do this one more time because there's another button I want to put up there so we can talk about. Um, so let's hit this button and again tap. Brings it up. And I'm going to scroll. I think it's all the way down the bottom. Yeah, all the way down the bottom. Pick this guy and save. So I'm going to wait on doing these two here. I want to follow the, the programming of buttons. Uh, through and um, you, you see how I just programmed two buttons you've got nine pages of green buttons which would be 90 buttons plus nine pages of red buttons that's 180 buttons you know if you were to get one of these from scratch configuring it and getting it set up nicely could be a real uh, project um, so there's a shortcut to that and to do that I need to go back to the red pages I'm going to pick the configuration. Whoops, I'm going to try and pick the configuration. I'm going to pick the configuration and I'm going to go to page A, which is this way. This is OEM default setup. The OEM can basically make one of these buttons for each of its machines and they can give a default setup that would be useful for that machine. If the user picks this, uh, it will ask, Are you sure? And you say yes, and it loads your 180 buttons with this default configuration from the OEM. That's a starting place. My, my, my guess is that people will have certain setups and certain ways they use the machine. They'll go through and reconfigure those buttons and tweak them. And when they do, they can save their settings on page B. So I'm going to go now to page B, which is this way. And... As you can see, I have a five axis machine, but the fourth and fifth axis are on a trunnion. So if I remove the trunnion, I have a three axis machine. So I have a setup here for the machine when it's set up as three axis and the machine when it's set up at five axis. I just optimize those, those different button pages in different ways depending on how I have my machine configured. This is basically how you can efficiently manage those 180 buttons for the best use for a particular application. And that pretty much covers the button. So I'm gonna say done here. And I'm gonna go back to the green pages where we were at. And I'd like to talk about the keyboard. The keyboard and trackpad are basically a keyboard and mouse replacement for your machine. If you've ever had a keyboard near a machine, you know how it's a magnet to chips and then it doesn't work so well. So um, this is, I believe a pretty decent solution. Um, if you're holding this guy like me and you're left-handed, you can take your thumb and hit the shift key and you get the capital letters, lowercase letters. If you need numbers, you just flip the page. It basically toggles between alpha and numeric. If you hold the shift key down, you get some function keys. I am going to make some changes to this page. I'm going to make it so that it's got all the keys on an AT uh, keyboard. Uh, this has a subset of them. Um, so it'll probably end up being three pages to get to what you need. The Control, Alt, and Windows keys are a toggle. So you hit it, turn it on, and Control, 5. And then the trackpad, of course, is this. And the left and right handed, see this is, if I'm holding this with my left hand, the left mouse button is underneath my left thumb. 
if you were holding it right-handed and you, in the properties when you were defining it, you picked right-handed, it would swap the left and right so that with your right hand, the left mouse button would be under your thumb. And then clicking done gets you back, and I'll do done again. So anyway, that's that's pretty much everything that's that's in there. There's two more pieces that I'd like to talk about, but I have to put a little asterisk next to it. They don't actually work until I have a machine running with an OEM driver set up because they they need they need to be coordinated with the OEM. And uh, one of them is this coordinates keypad. So let me go to that. The coordinates keypad is basically, think of this as a calculator with the ability to be able to recall values from memory internal, such as X, Y, Z registers, relative or machine coordinates, toolware, probing values, would all be able to be pulled up by doing a recall. You pull up that value, it would it would pop up in here. And then you could do math on it, and then you could store it to any other place. And uh, it would basically be a quick way of entering in a lot of the parameters that you have to do to set up your machine and, and configure your machine right through the pennant that's right in your hand. Then the last thing is DROs. And by DRO, I mean digital readout. The control panel on your machine uh, has digital readouts that show the coordinate positions of the spindle in various um, relationships, either the machine rela relationship to the machine, to the program, um, or relative to some other position. Um, the idea with the pennant is to have the pennant be an alternate control panel um, that you can use close up when you're actually at the machine doing something. So it makes sense that you'll want to have access to those numerical values uh, that the machine that is displayed on your control panel. So to do that on the pennant, we press down a button. I'm going to pick this top left hand button. I tap anywhere on the screen and then pick up. You'll recognize this as the normal button configuration screen. And um, I'm going to go to the bottom of this list. And DRO, or digital readout, is right here. So I'll select that. And as soon as I select it, it turns green, and it also shows me a properties dialog, which tells me what I have enabled at this point for this DRO. And right now, I have everything shut off. So you see here just digital readout, which is kind of a generic title for it. And if I were to save it, or actually I'll do it, if I save it now, you end up with just DRO off. If we basically go back to that configuration screen now, and I'm actually going to turn the DRO, now that I've set it to a DRO, I'm going to turn the DRO on so it displays something useful. So let's start out with X. It's showing relative X position. And you'll notice this font is a little larger. I'm now going to add the Y. So I do that by picking the second line. And the Y is relative Y again. And we'll add Z. So now we have X, Y, and Z get basically up to three DROs on one button area. You can have multiple button areas. You can have the same information on multiple screens, just so you don't have to flip screens back and forth. If you notice, I got relative X, Y, and Z. If I tap these again, now they've changed to the program value X, Y, and Z. And if I do it one more time, I now have, oops, looks like I missed one. Let's try that again. I now have X, Y, and Z machine coordinates. So this is basically how you would configure it. If I save this now, you'll see the machine coordinates up in that corner. One other item that's probably worth mentioning is the e-stop right up here. The e-stop is on all of the button screens, both the red and the green. 
it's a soft e-stop. It's not meant to replace the hardwired e-stops on your machine, but I think the soft e-stop on the pennant still serves a purpose. There's a couple of places where it seems obvious that this e-stop will be a benefit. One is, if you're holding the pennant in your hand, the e-stop is within an inch of your thumb and is easily able to be pressed if an emergency should come up. The second item would be in a situation where a machine operator is running in a production environment and has more than one machine that he's responsible for. Uh, he can set a machine up to run a job with this pennant and then take the pennant with him to the next machine as he sets up the next machine. And if he hears something going awry with the first machine, he can just reach over to the pennant for the first machine and hit the e-stop uh, without having to run across the shop to, uh, to deal with the problem. It also allows him to finish working on the machine he's doing. When that one's running, go back and deal with the problem with the other machine okay so let me just uh walk you through what an e-stop how the e-stop works if you hit anywhere up in here even hit the title you end up with the uh, e-stop popping up and um, this dialogue now is locking you from hitting any buttons and that would be local to the pennant beyond what the machine does um, to release the e-stop there needs to be an interlock and the interlock I came up with was pressing the A, Y, and C at the same time for about three seconds. So I hold it down like that and I'm out of e-stop. Anyway, that pretty much uh, gives you a quick rundown on uh, how to use the CS pennant. I hope you liked the demo and please give me feedback on it. Thanks.